Okay guys, tail hub is fully assembled, everything is Loctited. There's one more thing I want to show you on this before I move on to the tail box. Uh, I get a lot of questions on the forms, and this might be a little hard to see, but you can see, you see how there's a little bit of float, about a millimeter, millimeter, half of float in, this, uh, in these grips. That's there on purpose, don't try to shim that out. Um, that is there to allow the thrust batteries to relax and release. Uh, under load, and at, at, at speed, these you know centrifugal forces are going to pull those out, and that gap is that is going that uh, slop is going to be gone. But you definitely do not want to try to shim that out. Uh, tail hub is done. Next, we are going to zoom out a little bit. Um, I did get the ball length sized for both of these. Uh, next, we're going to tear down the tail box and uh, talk about everything that's there. Alright guys, as you can see, I now have the tail box torn down. Um, there's a couple things here I want to talk about make make note of. Uh, first thing I want to talk about is the output shaft. More importantly, this um, uh, bevel gear. Just like the... I'm going to try to zoom in a little better. Just like the front transmission, this bevel gear has a pin running through the gear, through the shaft, and out the other side. That pin its sole purpose is to hold this bevel gear in place and apply torque to the shaft. Just like the front transmission, there is a set screw holding that pin in place. Now on the tail output shaft, that set screw is down inside the actual tail shaft itself. You're going to want to take your Allen wrench, put it up inside the tail, hold the gear, and spin that, out, that set screw out. This is another one of those things that is noted in the manual, but somehow it comes up every couple of weeks anyway, so I'm going to point it out. That set screw, if you forget to put that set screw in, tighten it up, and put some Loctite on it, that bevel gear can come out, that pin holding the bevel gear can come out in flight and cause you to lose tail authority. So we're going to put some Loctite on that screw, on that set screw, it down the threads again don't go don't go nuts with Loctite you just need to dampen the threads a little bit put that down in there I like to do it now before I reposition the tail box so there's no chance of Loctite getting down inside my radial bearings and then you just want to snug that game up now that set screw is set pin can't go anywhere and I got Loctite on it back back out of here we'll talk about the rest of the tail box uh, tail box, the tail box itself is all CNC aluminum. The bulk of it, this is the actual clamp that goes on, the clamps on the boom. Does have the uh, bevel gear, the, the torque tube goes into on it. Uh, make sure that is fully seated up into the into the housing. Didn't come loose in shipping. You've got a, an aluminum side plate on each side with uh, captured radial bearings. There's also a sleeve on the shaft that is what um, keeps the radial bearings captured. Um, pinched together, the uh, side of the, uh, the bevel gear here and the side of the sleeve capture the radial bearings. Um, there is a plastic pitch arm uh, turnbuckle for this tail. Uh, Fly Barless Rotors does sell a metal version. I happen to have one of those right here. Uh, this is an upgrade. Um, a lot of guys like to see bling. I'm going to tell you this is beautiful. Uh, it was machined by the guys at KDE for Ralph. Um, it's a beautiful CNC aluminum with a brass, uh, with excuse me, a bronze bushing for the actual ball. Uh, just bling, certainly not necessary. But if you like bling, Flybarsh Rotors has those available. Uh, the plastic one works great though. That there's no mechanical reason to need to change it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and um, put the tail box back together. Again, making sure to lock tight all of these various screws as I put it together. Alright guys, there it is. Uh, tail box completely assembled, Loctited. Obviously the, set, the screw for the pinning the boom and the clamp bolts for the uh, tail fin and boom are not obviously Loctited at, at all. They're not assembled yet. Everything else is ready to go. Um, I do not put Loctite on this bolt coming through um, for the pivot point on the turnbuckle. There is a jam nut here. Um, you don't want to just crank that down. You don't want to bind this at all. So the jam nut allows you to have ever so slight a play in the bolt, but yet um, lock it up against this plate. Loctite isn't going to hurt it. It's just a moot point with the nylock nut. Um, this is where you start to see the fruits of your effort, uh, taking the time to, to size those balls. This tail 
absolutely smooth, no binding. Um, there's n under this is not going to cause any load issues. It's going to be great. <clears throat> the last thing I want to talk about, and this is um, something I get asked fairly often, and I'm going to point it out. The tail rotor on the N7 rotates counterclockwise. Excuse me, clockwise. On the average helicopter, the tail rotor spins counterclockwise. And that's just a function of the drivetrain. Uh, the most common way to find you play, way you see an auto rotation gear is the auto rotation gear is above the main shaft. Um, therefore, the transmission is upside down relative to where it is in the N7. Uh, because the N7 is a nitro and trying to keep the helicopter as low profile as possible, uh, the auto rotation gear and the main gear are flipped. Uh, same as with the N7 N5C torque tube. Um, so what that does is puts the transmission underneath the main gear and is upside down so it drives the gears um, the opposite direction. Um, mechanically this has not this makes no bearing whatsoever on the performance of the helicopter. There are many helicopters out there, many, many other 3D models out there that use a clockwise spinning tail. Don't let that throw you off. Just make sure when you put the hub on here uh, because you want leading edge control on the tail blades make sure you put the hub on so that um, you have leading edge control for clockwise rotation. And that might be upside down for you guys. Let me try it like that. Clockwise rotation with leading edge control. Tailbox is done. Transmission is done. Clutch stack is done. Uh, next I am going to set that aside and then pull the head apart and um, we're going to go ahead and tear the head down and build the head. Alright, so I've got the head out of the bag. Um, Quick note, in, in with the head bag, you're going to find a couple of, um, a baggie with the links and some extras. In this bag are the three rods for the swash to servo links, as well as the um, tail rod control um, rod covers, ends, and links. So there's a lot more in this bag than just head parts, so make sure um, you don't think those are extra. You're going to need them later. We're not going to do anything with this baggie at this step. Um, we will build the links when it comes time to set up a fly barless. So for now, I'm just going to set that to the side. Also, in, in with the head bag, you've got the two um, uh, 48 millimeter rods for the um, swash to pitch links. Again, not going to do anything with those. Those will get handled during the um, head setup. Set that off to the side as well. Um, <clears throat> So, as you can see, the head is and swash plate are generally assembled. Uh, again, uh, we've said it before, this is a pre-assembled a factory strictly for parts count purposes. Do not put this on your helicopter and fly it. There's no lube on the thrust bearings. There's no lube on, on the, um, the dampers. Um, you're going to want to pull this apart and uh, re-lube everything, lock tight, put it back together in the correct order. I'm going to go ahead and cut the camera when we get back. I'll have the head tore apart and we'll talk about the innards of the head. Okay, as you can see I've got the head completely disassembled. Um, just like you would expect to find in most um, heads, you've got an inner and outer thrust radial bearing, a thrust bearing, and then a shim. You've got a spindle, and then you've got a um, spindle bolt on both sides holding it all together. You also have some shims that go between the blade grip and the damper. Dampers themselves are pre-installed. I will pull those out and lubricate them here in a second. Um, I want to talk about the preload on this head. Uh, for, out of the box this has a one millimeter shim um, between the damper and the blade grip. Uh, now that amount of preload is going to be acceptable for 95 percent of the people on the planet. Um, if you're running 1950 to 2050 on the head um, it's going to be great but some flyballish units, some flight styles, some lower RPMs, um, they like a little softer damping. So uh, if you um, are running a lower head speed or you've got a flyballish unit that's really susceptible to tight damping and prefers lighter damping, you can change these out. Um, there is a, they offer a 0.75 and a 0.5 shim um, from Synergy. Uh, you can li lighten the preload a little bit. I've had zero problems uh, with my Icon systems with the one millimeter shims. So I'm going to run those, but um, again, there are options for lighter preloads if you need them. Uh, I'm going to not bore you with watching me build the head. Um, same tip applies though. I like to build 
first thing you have to do is find out on these thrust on these radial bearing on the um, thrust bearing races which one has the tight ID which is this one and which one has the loose ID which is this one and what I'm going to do is I'm going to build that stack on my wrench backwards so radial bearing first race with the tight ID next going to put oops excuse me between the radial bearing and the thrust bearing is that little thin washer make sure you don't skip that again that one has the large OD ID tight ID bearing race goes on next bearing cage I will apply my Bodo lube put this race on and then I can put the whole assembly up into the grip um, just makes it easier this will go well up inside the grip allows me to align everything a lot easier so I'm going to cut the camera get the blade grips lubricate, lubricated and um, back together when I come back we'll talk about the washout arms alright so I've got the feathering shaft back together again used my Bodo lube on the thrust bearings good quality uh, used a little bit of Bodo lube on the, on the dampers preload pre lube those a little bit um, real quick I'm going to talk about this is the E7SE head so it does have the grease ports for the grips that's going to be nice you can just shoot some grease in the thrust bearings without having to pull the head completely apart i still pull the head apart every 100 flights or so just to physically inspect the thrust bearings but um every 25 or so flights shoot a little thrust a little more grease in the thrust bearings and you'll be good to go uh, next thing we're going to do is we're going to put the pitch arms on real quick i want to talk about these um, if you look at this from this angle there is the the surface that meets the blade grip is tapered there are two size bolts um, for this. You've got a 3x6 and a 3x8. You want to make sure you have the 3x6 bolt in the hole on the tapered side. Um, otherwise, the 3x8 can actually go in far enough to, Im to uh, impact the thrust bearings. Um, you don't want to do that. So 3x6 goes in the tapered side, 3x8 goes in the thicker side. Again, uh, on all swash balls and links, uh, I'm a big fan of using red Loctite or anything can cause me to have a crash. So all my ball links and pitch arms will be put together with red Loctite. We come back, I'll have the grips completely done and be ready to talk about the washout arms. Alright, welcome back. Uh, as you can see, the head is completely back together. The um, pitch arms are on. Balls are, uh, ball links are actually Loctited in. Now we're ready to take these apart and Loctite these. The washout arms have um, one joint that needs Loctite. Um, and it's right here in the, this arm. Uh, one thing I want to show you on the camera though, uh, avoid the urge to simply put your uh, wrench on there and spin that out. The stud that this link is on is actually a set screw that goes up, that rides up against those threads. So you got to pull that stud off before you loosen this bolt to apply your Loctite. If you don't pull this stud, you can damage the threads on this bolt. So I'm going to cut the camera pull this apart um, and uh, come back and show you the various pieces. Alright, so I got the washout arms off. Uh, quick note, when you're pulling the washout arms off and pulling this um, uh, elbow off the washout arm, be very careful. There are paper thin washers that go between the arm itself and these pivot joints. The one on the one goes between the washout arm and the head one goes between the washout arm on the elbow. Those washers are very important. If you don't have those washers, the metal can actually contact and can cause binding. Uh, and they're very small. It would be very, very easy to replace. I don't even know if I'll be able to show them to you on camera very easily. Let's see, Let's see if you can see that on the camera. See that real thin washer? There is one of those there, and there's one of those here. Just be very careful not to lose those. Um, when you put this back together, the only place you really need to apply Loctite is on this bolt going into the elbow and then Loctite on the end of the, of the uh, set screw going into the link. Um, to get the, the link, set screw out of the link, you can take your one millimeter wrench, oops, that was too big, I have to find here, your one millimeter wrench and um, pull that set screw out of the link. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and cut the camera. Uh, put these back together when I come back I'll have the washout arms on the head well there's the head all back together washout arms the elbow joints are loctited the uh, washout arms are back on washers are all in place um, 
the bolt the um, long uh, bolts that hold the washout arms on actually go all the way through the head they're actually the same bolts that squeeze the head tight onto the shaft so these are going to be loose so if you see them kind of flopping around a little sloppy that's because I can't tighten them up till they're on the head uh, one more tip as with the tail pitch sliders you're going to want to size these links these links are much easier to size right now when they're off the helicopter um, than trying to size them with the head mounted to the shaft so uh, we should go ahead and um, size those now save you some time all right two more things to do tonight uh, first of all i am going to pull this wash apart pull all the swash balls off lock tight those on um, lock tight the bolt with the anti-rotation pin in it and then the other thing i'm going to try to get done tonight is um, uh, test fit the rpm sensor on the clutch stack um, be right back I like to pull all of the swash balls off. Um, there are two different sizes. Uh, by pulling them all off, I can make sure that I am lo applying Loctite as I put them back on. Uh, just a quick tip there. If you pull them all off, uh, you, you, there's no way to forget to put Loctite on. All right, guys, the head is complete. Swash is back together in Loctite. I'm going to go ahead and end this first video here. Um, Got a lot done tonight. Most of the sub assemblies are done. Uh, next video will cover the motor, fan shroud, and we'll begin building the frame. See you guys tomorrow.